right so uh, hello everyone so let's start the second uh, lecture uh, based on the short course on introduction to nonlinear filtering and particle filtering so um, before i start the uh, second lecture as a continuation of the first lecture i want to give you like a brief overview what we have discussed yesterday so um, yesterday actually uh, we actually uh, uh, formulate our filtering problem right let me quickly write down the two equations that we have associated with the problem uh, filtering problem right right so this is uh, our signal process, right? Associated with uh, um, two uh, independent noises, right? So this is signal, and uh, there are uh, two independent Wiener noises, and. Uh, on the other hand, we have uh, the observation process that's actually gives us the information, right? Associated with the signal process that we already know that we are unable to uh, track the signal process, process directly. So this is the observation process, which is dyt equals h of xt dt plus dwt, right? This is observation. And you can see that the noise that involved with the observation process is the same as the one of the noise associated with the signal process. That means this is a simple uh, problem, but uh, it is not rather simple because you can see that uh, these two equations are correlated to each other because the, this uh, noise, D, uh, noise, uh, Wiener noise W is associated with both the equations. So then uh, uh, we actually discussed that the best estimate of the uh, state of the signal, xt, f of xt is nothing but the conditional expectation of f of xt given the uh, information we acquired from this observation. So that is given by this gt is actually is the sigma field right generated by this observation process right. And then we actually prove that we can express this uh, conditional expectation as a duality pairing of uh, uh, this function, a nice function f and associated uh, conditional probability density pi t. And uh, then uh, we uh, came to know that this pi t is called the optimal filter, right, optimal filter. This solves, this pi t solves the famous, right, kushner stratnovich equation, right, which uh, we call this uh, as a FKK equation as well, right. So this is a highly nonlinear measure valued equation. So it's kind of hard to, you know, analyze. So then, um, then we discussed that thanks to the Sakai's work, we have a corresponding linear type uh, equation which solves the unnormalized version of this optimal filter. So now we are in the environment of uh, deriving Sakai equation. That's why yesterday we uh, actually, the mid of, middle of the lecture, we started to discuss about this change measure uh, transformations and everything. Uh, so I uh, started to discuss, okay, because uh, uh, to derive the Sakai equation, we have to come up with a new probability 
measure under that new probability measure, our observation process actually behaves as a, a standard uh, Wiener process, right? So we have to do, uh, we have to uh, find uh, such a measure uh, so that uh, this is uh, becomes standard uh, Wiener process. So that is why we, yesterday we discussed, uh, you know, uh, Doolian date exponentials. So basically we used to use that Doolian date exponential uh, associate with this observation process as the uh, radon nicotine derivative and uh, of a new uh, measure and uh, with respect to the original measure P. So let's uh, continue with the, now, uh, uh, let me st start over here. Let's continue the second lecture from here onwards. So at the end of uh, last lecture, we actually uh, stated uh, the uh, Bayes theorem, right? So let me first prove that theorem and uh, then we can continue rest of the discussions. So let me again uh, state the Bayes theorem quickly. Theorem 2.5. Bayes formula. Right. So let uh, uh, beta is an integrable random variable on the probability space, space uh, omega fp and curly g be a sub sigma field. Of f. And please note that this uh, notation beta here I use as an integrable random variable on this probability space. And it is not any relationship between here because I use the same uh, notation beta as the coefficient function of the uh, Wiener process WT associated with the signal. Uh, okay, don't uh, you know misunderstand. So that is my. Uh, Actually, I made a small uh, mistake to use the same notation. I'm sorry for that. So here we use this notation beta is again as a integrable, integrable random variable on the probability space omega fp and uh, g be a sub sigma field of curly f. And suppose that q, right, q b another probability measure such that the original probability measure P is absolutely continuous with respect to Q and M is given by the uh, radon nicotine derivative of the probability measure, original probability measure P with respect to Q. Then we have conditional expectation of this random variable beta given the sub uh, sigma field G equal to conditional uh, expectation with respect to Q of uh, beta times M given G divided by conditional expectation of M with respect to Q given G. So this is the Bayes theorem, right? So why we need this theorem? Because we use this theorem to prove the generalized version of a Bayes theorem, which is associated with the random processes, which is called Kalyampur Stribal formula, okay? So let's start to 
prove this Bayes formula. All right. And uh, note that again, I want to stress that this EQ is uh, actually refers to the expectation with respect to new probability measure Q. Okay. Proof. So now we pick. Uh, set A from sub sigma field G to by the definition of the conditional expectation we have, right? integral over A of the conditional expectation of theta given G with respect to the original probability measure P is nothing but integral over A of the random variable beta. So, this is the definition of the conditional expectation. This holds for any A belongs to this sub sigma field G, right? Now, we know that Radon Nikodin derivative of P with respect to the new probability measure Q is M, right? So, using that, you can express this right integral in this manner. This is nothing but integral over A with respect, now we are going to express this integral with respect to new probability measure Q. So, that is nothing but integral over A beta times M dQ. Okay. So, so, this you can rewrite as integral over whole uh, probability space omega with respect to the characteristic function standing on set A beta m q. What is this? So, this is nothing but the expectation of this guy with respect to new probability measure Q, right? So, this is expectation with respect to Q of So, now what we will going to do, now we will going to use the uh, fact that we can here we have the expectation with respect to Q. So, we are going to use the tower property. In other words, it is which is called law of iterated expectation, right? So, that means you can condition inside with respect to the uh, probability measure Q. So, this is nothing but conditional expectation of M given G and this, right? So, we use just tower property. Property, right? Tower property. Now, here now we are going to use a small trick. So, inside the expectation, we have this conditional expectation, right? So, let me express that quickly. Uh, 
given g. Now I multiply this inside of this expectation by conditional expectation of m given g over conditional expectation of m given g. So nothing changed, right? All right. So now you can uh, realize that because we already project this random variable over to this here sub sigma will g. Therefore, this is a g measurable random variable, right? As well as this is also g measurable random variable. Therefore, you can pull this guy and one over this guy inside this conditional expectation, right? That is what we are going to do now. So, so this becomes conditional expectation, uh, sorry, expectation of conditional expectation. So inside we have conditional expectation of characteristic function over A beta M given G over conditional expectation of m given g times m, right, given g, right. So we didn't do anything uh, new since these two are g measurable random variables. So you can pull inside these two, right. So resulting expression is this one, right? Since A is uh, actually we pick from the sub sigma veil G, therefore the corresponding characteristic function standing over the set A is G measurable random variable. So you can pull it out from this conditional expectation, right? And this is a conditional expectation. And then we can rewrite right beta m given g over conditional expectation m given g times m right Yeah, and uh, I, I, I missed uh, one point and uh, sorry about that. Since, so inside this expectation, we have conditional expectation. So, so using again the tower property, you will, right, end up with this. Conditional expectation of characteristic function. A is okay. Now, since this is a G measurable random variable, from here to here I apply tower property. From, since this is a G measurable random variable, you can pull it out, right? Let me pull it out. So you can pull it out like this. So then it becomes. Right? Good. 
So, we are in a good shape now. So, now this expectation is nothing but the integral over set A of conditional expectation over of a beta times m of with respect to g over conditional expectation with respect to q of m given g with respect to probability measure q, right. So, we, from the radon nicotine, I mean derivative, we know that since m is the radon nicotine derivative, we know we can re-express that this integral as over dp, right? Good. So we started with we started with integral of conditional expectation of, uh, of uh, beta given g with respect to original measure beta, right. Finally, we end up with this result. So, this holds, these two are equal, right. This holds for any a belongs to sub, uh, sub sigma weld g. Therefore, we get the conclusion. So, conditional expectation of beta given g equal conditional expectation with the new probability measure uh, q of beta m given g over t. Right. Almost sure. So, this is the proof of uh, Bayes formula, right? Right. So, so, we can use this result to establish the proof of uh, Kaliampur Stribal formula. So, before that, because we have to set up the situation. Uh, uh, according to our problem, because our uh, ultimate goal is to derive the Sakai equation. In, in order to do that, we have to transform the observation process as a standard uh, Wiener process. So, in order to do that, we have to construct uh, the Boolean date exponential. All right. So now let us uh, use change of measure procedure, measure procedure to transform our observation process y t into a standard one dimensional Wiener process, right. So, let me remind uh, quickly the Uh, observation process dyt equal h of xt dt plus dwt. Right? This is our observation process, right? So you can express this one as 0 to integral of 0 to t h of x s 
plus W D. Right? Now <coughs> Now, you can uh, uh, construct a new process. So, let us denote that new process as uh, eta t is nothing but the stochastic uh, integral of h of x s with respect to Wiener process associate with the Wiener noise associate with the observation. So here we have minus sign. So this is the new process eta t. So so we can express like this way because this is since uh, h is a bounded function, right? Function. So this is well defined. So now, now consider, right, consider the quadratic variation of this process. So what is the quadratic variation? since it is a bounded function, right? So this is actually finite, almost surely, right? Therefore, expectation of exponential of uh, one half of the quadratic variation of this new process eta, is finite, right? Is finite. Okay, because the quadratic variation is almost surely finite. Therefore, this is finite. Now, what can you conclude from this result? Right? So, remind the uh, uh, Assumption based on the Novico criterion, right? That is this, right? This is the uh, hypothesis we uh, have associated with the Novico criterion. So that means the hypothesis actually satisfy, right? In the Novico criterion. Therefore, by the Novico criterion. Criterion. This new process MT. So this is a exponential martingale, Boolean date exponential martingale. Actually, we construct using this new process eta. This minus zero to t h of of xs dws right minus one half uh, so let sorry let me express this one as okay eta t yes t minus one half quadratic variation of eta okay. now this is you can express using that Integral stochastic integral zero to t h of x s w s minus one half zero t h of x s right. So this is the Boolean dead exponential, and this is a continuous. It's a continuous. 
martingale. Due to the Novikov criterion, right? Because we showed that uh, the process eta t we construct using the observation process satisfying the hypothesis associate with the Novikov criterion. Therefore, this is a continuous martingale. Right. Therefore, okay. So we can introduce right a new probability measure, a new. Measure, probability measure, P tilde, such that dP tilde, so uh, Radonikadin derivative of dP P tilde with respect to original probability measure P, we take as This Boolean dead exponential, right? Empty. I can mix right like this way, right? So this is Boolean dead exponential, right? So here. P tilde is absolutely continuous with respect to original probability measure P, right? <clears throat> and also vice versa, you can easily verify that the we can we can easily verify that uh, radon nicotine derivative of original probability measure p with respect to new probability measure p tilde is nothing but mt inverse okay mt inverse so we denote this mt inverse as m tilde t so rest of the course, we use this notation m tilde t as the radon nicotine derivative of the original probability measure p with respect to new probability measure p tilde. Right? What is this m tilde, m, uh, tilde t? M tilde t is exponential of integral zero t h of x s dy s uh, stochastic integral with respect to y s y because under new probability measure p tilde our observation process becomes standard Wiener process. Okay. So this stochastic integral minus one half so this is m tilde t all right okay uh, uh, I, I want to uh, notice that another fact because uh, uh, so our uh, radon nicotine derivative is uh, uh, actually uh, st stochastic process. So therefore, this uh, uh, radon nicotine derivative is actually given the sigma field f of t. Right. 
that is the sigma uh, fee, uh, field associated with our original probability space. All right. Now we have the another. We have another important theorem, right? Let me state that. Theorem 2.5, right? Another important theorem, right? Under the new probability measure, P tilde, right? So this is our new probability measure, P tilde, right? Our observation process y t is a one dimensional standard standard Wiener process, right? One dimensional standard Wiener process, which is independent independent of the Wiener process beta t uh, bt sorry, associated with with the signal process process uh, xt right so right so this is a crucial theorem right several times i stress uh, stress that so we actually want to come up with the new probability measure p such that our observation process actually behave like a one dimensional standard Wiener process. And also uh, apart from that, that process actually independent of the Wiener process, Vt associate with the signal process Xt because in signal process Xt, we have two noises, right? Right, Wt and Vt. So let's uh, prove this theorem quickly. All right. So, okay, so our goal is to show that, first of all, we want to show that Y, right, process Y is a martingale with respect to this new probability measure P tilde. So it is uh, easy to verify that uh, MT satisfy the following. Stochastic differential equation. So, what is MT? MT is the uh, Radon Nikodin derivative, right? MT is the Radon Nikodin derivative of new probability measure P tilde with respect to original probability measure P, right? This is MT, right? So, we want to show that, I mean, we want to uh, verify that this MT satisfy the following stochastic differential equation. So that is, uh, it's nothing but EMT equals minus MT 
h of x t d w t right because m t is the Boolean date exponential right that is minus 0 t h of x s t w s minus 1 half 0 t h of x s square d s. So, you can apply the Ito formula for this guy and come up with this right. So, we, you can easily verify that ok. So, M t satisfy this stochastic differential equation. All right. So we have this. On the other hand, the observation process, right? The observation process, right? Observation process is given by, right? Observation process given by dy t of x t dt dwt. So, this is our observation process. So, you have two processes. So, this stochastic differential equation satisfy your ardent nicotine derivative m t and you have this stochastic differential equation associated with the partial observation. Now, apply, now apply um, Ito product formula, right, product formula to MTYT, right. You just simply apply Ito product formula for MT is the Radon nicotine derivative uh, and observation process YT. Then you get D of MT YT, sorry, MT YT plus uh, YT DMT plus. Uh, differential of quadratic uh, mutual variation of right. So, so this is MT uh, times dyt. So this is h of x t dt plus dwt, right? plus y t times this guy, right, this guy. That is, you have minus sign, minus m t h of x t d w t. So, what is the mutual variation of these two? That is actually, nothing but, uh, let me write down that term over here. That is minus empty x of x t t t. Because d w t dwt times dwt con, uh, contributes dt, right. So, now you can, you know, simplify further. Uh, so, this term actually cancel out with this guy. Then finally, you end up 1 minus y d h of t. So, that is the, uh, that is what we obtain from the 
from by applying it to a product formula. So, in other words, this product mt yt is the stochastic integral of 1 minus h of xs ms dws, right, with respect to being a noise w, right. So, this is a is a martingale with respect to right with respect to original probability measure p original probability measure p right our goal is to argue that first of all y is a martingale with respect to new probability measure p tilde so what we are going to do right so you you actually argue that this product mt yt this is the radon nicotine derivative with the uh, observation process is a martingale with respect to p basically you can now apply the bayes formula to you know do that right so now by applying Bayes formula, right? That is what we proved uh, at the beginning of this lecture. Conditional expectation with respect to new probability measure p tilde. So we refer as e tilde, okay? Of y t given. Uh, sorry. Uh, Fs, right? So this is nothing but conditional expectation with respect to the probability measure p of m t y t given Fs over conditional expectation of m t given Fs. So we simply applied Bayes formula. So just this E actually associate with the expectation uh, of the, with respect to the original probability measure P. E tilde associate with the new probability measure P tilde. So we simply applied uh, Bayes formula, right? With this sigma field Fs. Now, what can you say about MT, right? MT is a exponential martingale, right? Exponential martingale with respect to the sigma field F associated with the original uh, probability space. Therefore, so this becomes, so let me actually write down here. Ms and uh, uh, so uh, I'm sorry. So MT times YT. Sorry, MT times YT. Actually, we showed that which is a uh, martingale with respect to original probability measure P, due due to the fact that so you can actually uh, uh, express this conditional expectation of MT YT given FS as MS YS because it is a martingale, right? And divided by now this because mt is a exponential martingale with respect to original probability measure p so over you have ms right so this m cancel out so this is equal to ys almost surely so since uh, 
t is a exponential martingale. It's an exponential martingale. With respect to original probability measure p. Finally, we argue that conditional expectation, right, of y t with respect to new probability measure p tilde, uh, given the uh, sigma field f s, is nothing but y s for any s less or equal to t. Therefore, what you can conclude y t is a martingale. With respect to knee probability measure p t. Right. So, we have argued that it is a martingale with respect to new probability measure p tilde. Right, all right, but our uh, goal is to show that y t is a standard Wiener one dimensional Wiener process, right? Uh, to prove this theorem, right? So, if this is a martingale with respect to uh, sorry, this is uh, yeah, p tilde. Now, what how do you show that? This is a standard Wiener process, one dimensional Wiener process. Basically, you apply Levy's theorem. Since this is a martingale with respect to p tilde, you have to check whether the quadratic variation of y, if it is t, uh, then uh, we can argue that it is a standard Wiener process, one dimensional Wiener process due to the Levy's theorem. So now consider. Differential of the quadratic variation of the observation process is nothing but right, simply this. So, this is actually dt. So, that means quadratic variation is t, right. Therefore, So, um, yt is a standard Wiener one dimensional Wiener process with respect to P theta due to this theorem. Okay. So, how do you argue that this y t is actually independent of the Wiener process v t associated with the uh, signal process. So, actually that uh, fact actually uh, uh, immediately we can obtain since uh, the Wiener noises appear in the signal process W and V are independent. Okay. The independence independence of T and T follows immediately from immediately from the fact that WT 
and I independent processors. So this is the proof right, of the uh, this theorem. So now actually we prove that under new uh, the new property measure p tilde our observation process is one dimensional standard in a process on the other hand which is independent of the noise b associate with the signal process now we are in the situation to discuss the generalize uh, Bayer's theorem, which is called the Kalyampur Schreiber formula for the random processes, okay? So the following theorem, right, describe. The relation, the relation between normalized filter by D, right? This is the normalized filter which solves uh, Kushner Stratnovich equation, right? Normalized filter pi T and the unnormalized filter let's denote as theta t right so which is called Kaliampur Stribal formula. Right. So let me state the theorem. The proof is just a couple of lines because uh, you immediately apply the Bayer's formula, right? that we proved at the beginning of this lecture. Theorem 2.6, Kaliampur, Spibel formula. The optimal filter, the optimal filter by T can be represented, can be represented as So we know that uh, this is the, the duality pairing, right? If being a very nice uh, function, and this is the conditional uh, probability density we called optimal filter. So this is the conditional expectation, right? Right? This of a signal process, right? Moment of a signal signal process x t given the information gathered from the observation process yt, which is given by uh, curly gt, right? So this is nothing but uh, conditional, conditional expectation of uh, f of xt times the Radon nicotine derivative m tilde t given the information gt with respect to 
mu probability measure p tilde divided by this right so this is the kaliampur tribal formula so for all f belongs to bounded functions and Uh, here, duality pairing theta theta t f is nothing but conditional expectation with respect to new probability measure p tilde of m tilde t times f of x t given. Okay. Now you can clearly see the relation, right? Right? So, in other words, what is what is duality pairing theta t and just unity one is nothing but conditional expectation of radon nicotine derivative m tilde t given gt with respect to new probability machine p tilde. So, now you see the relation. This guy is conditional expectation of f of x t given gt equals tilde of conditional expectation tilde m tilde t f of x t of g t divided by see this is just Bayes formula right you can immediately apply the Bayes formula to establish this Kalyampur tribal formula. So let me write down the proof by uh, uh, just uh, by a few lines. Okay. So we know that, right? We know that. Uh, Radon nicotine derivative of the original probability measure P with respect to P tilde and T is M tilde T, right? So you know that, right? That is how we define, right? That is how we define, right? Remember the Radon nicotine derivative of original measure, uh, sorry, a new probability measure P tilde with respect to original probability measure P is nothing but MT. The inverse is we denote by M tilde. Okay. Then we get the desired result, result, right? The desired result. Right. Right. This is nothing but unit pairing with respect to unnormalized filter. Get this immediately by simply, right? By simply uh, plugging by simply replacing or plugging. Right. This 
simply replacing a probability measure P and probability measure Q in the theorem 2.5, what is that? This is the Bayes theorem. with probability measure P given at T and probability measure P tilde given T respectively. Right. So this is the proof. So that is why we discussed the proof of Bayes theorem using that the Bayes theorem, you can immediately uh, conclude the proof of Kalyanpur's tribal formula theorem. All right. Okay. Now we are actually heading toward to derive the Saka equation. Before that, we have another important lemma to prove. It's kind of uh, lengthy, so we can start uh, to discuss that lemma. Then after that, we can immediately de derive the Sakai equation. All right. So, this is the subtopic three Zakai and K S equation. We can call it K K also. We here actually in this section, we are going to derive these two equations. Okay. So let uh, the class MF of uh, R denote. the collection of all finite Borel measures, right? Measures on R, right? Therefore, Unnormalized filter theta t, right, is a MFR valued process, right. So, unnormalized uh, filter theta t is MFR valued because this class actually contain all finite Borel measures, right? All right. And also uh, not, notice that uh, we have already verified that our observation process, right? Our observation process, uh, dyp h of ST PT plus DWT, right? So this is a one dimensional standard Wiener process under 
mu probability measure p tilde right. We prove that. Beside that, we argue that this is y, this y t is a uh, independent of uh, the Wiener process B associated with the signal process, right. So, therefore, by the observation process, we have um, the observation process. We have the WT equal dyt minus h of xt. So, you what you are going to do, you simply plug this expression, right? Instead of the differential of the noise w uh, in signal process to obtain the following uh, new version of the signal process okay by plugging the wt into signal process that is actually equation number 1.1 right signal process We get the xt equal right alpha minus beta h of xt dt plus beta xt dyt plus gamma x t d d t. All right. Okay. You can easily verify this one. Okay. I'm not going to do that. So you can just plug this d w into our original signal process. This is our original signal process. All right, beta x t. Just plug. Okay. Then you get this version. Now you can see that. Um, so this is a stochastic differential equation. Actually, right solves the state of the dynamical system that we want to estimate x t in under the new probability measure p tilde. On the other hand, you can verify that thanks to the theorem we proved this noise b t right and noise y t are independent and also this is one dimensional standard wiener noise under new probability measure p tilde so now we have a nice stochastic differential equation under new probability measure p tilde that means under new probability space right omega f t p tilde So, um, beside that, beside that, since uh, M tilde t, right, right, M tilde t, what is the M tilde t? M tilde t is the 
rad on nicotine uh, nicotine derivative uh, of uh, original measure probability measure uh, original probability measure p with respect to p tilde okay so that is nothing but uh, the Julian date exponential let me remind zero to p of x s y s minus one half zero to t of x s So, so we can, since m tilde is, m tilde t is this Julian date exponential, this is a martingale, exponential martingale, we can easily show that by applying, easily show that by applying Ito formula, M till that T satisfy this stochastic differential equation. Right. Okay. All right. Now we are ready to start to discuss the last lemma before we derive in the Sakai equation. This is very important lemma. Okay, so let me state the lemma, then we can start to discuss about the proof. Okay. Right. Lemma three point one. Let uh, Kazai and Kazai bar are. Uh, Predictable, predictable processes defined on the probability space omega P tilde. So we take this Kasai and Kasai bar are predictable processes defined on this new probability space associated with probability measure P tilde, okay? Such that the following uh, caveats uh, exist, okay? Um, expectation with respect to new probability measure p tilde of the integral of psi t dt is finite and expectation integral psi bar t square Right. Okay. All right. Then, so once these two processes satisfy these two conditions over this property, new property space, we have following three results. First one is conditional expectation with respect to new probability measure of the integral of this psi s dS given d 
the partial information we gather from the observation process that is sub sigma field gt right is nothing but integral 0 to t conditional expectation of psi s given gs right this is a very crucial result basically you can interchange the conditional expectation and this integral and that in other words you can pull inside this conditional expectation inside the integral so this is the first result the second one is uh, conditional expectation of integral zero to t the side bar d y s so this is a stochastic integral right this is a one dimensional standard uh, Wiener process given g t well, 0 to t conditional expectation of sorry the psi bar s given g s So this is second result. Last but not least, so conditional expectation of this integral zero t the side bar is dBs the stochastic integral with respect to the Wiener noise b given. gt this is zero this is zero okay this conditional expectation is zero so this is the third result so here gt is nothing but the sigma field generated from the partial information associate with the observation process right so these three results are crucial to derive sakai equation okay so let's start to discuss the proof okay all right So let's uh, try to prove the first result. Oh. So firstly, we take psi be a simple. predictable process okay so we take psi be a simple predictable process so that means you can express this process psi as Finite sum come from J comes from one to N as I J characteristic function standing on the interval X J Y J S where X J y j j runs from 1 to n are this joint this joint 
sub intervals right of interval uh, 0 to t okay 0 t and uh, cos i j is f x j measurable random variables random variables oh. a runs as 1 to n right so that is how we construct our simple process kasai right right so this kasai j each kasai j is uh, if uh, curly uh, sigma field actually uh, generated up to x j measurable random variable right so that is very very crucial point right okay. all right Now, now we can consider conditional expectation of integral zero to t of the process cos i s integral of the process cos i s given g t okay we consider this so since this is a simple process this integral actually reduced to right finite sum find a random sum right so this is nothing but conditional expectation of sum of j run from 1 to n plus i j times y j minus x j right given GT, right? So, since a uh, conditional expectation is a linear operator, so this is nothing but J runs from 1 to N conditional expectation with respect to new probability measure P tilde of psi J by J xj right given gt okay so up to here it is very clear right so now what uh, we are we can do we can do a, some kind of a trick we actually uh, express this sigma field right sub sigma field gt generated from the information associated with the observation process as the uh, combination of the information up to xj and information from xj to t right you can express gt as combination of those two informations so let me express that then you will realize this is k runs from 1 to n conditional expectation of si j 
y j minus x j. This is you can express as g curly g up to point x j right union curly g from x j to p right all right. Now here uh, G X J T is the sigma field generated generated by the information of the process is from x j to y clear okay so this is the sigma field generated by the information from the observation process y s from the point x j to t right Therefore, this inside of this summation reduce to the following expression, right? So, this is nothing but since so you can pull out this, uh, you know, deterministic term outside of the expectation, conditional expectation. Right, uh, y j minus x j, right, conditional expectation of psi j, right, given g x j. Why is that? Because we know that our observation process is a one dimensional standard Wiener process. They have independent increment, right? Therefore, uh, psi j actually uh, only depend upon this sigma algebra, okay, due to the fact that it boiled down to this expression, okay. So, this is nothing but for the simple process we have 0 to t. So, now you can express as integral conditional expectation of psi s given g s. Yes. Okay. So let me state the reason for this equality. Right. The equality above the last one follows from the fact that 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 The observation process y 
S has independent increment. Independent increments. Okay. So Y S has independent increment. Therefore, so we actually express uh, the sigma field G T as a union of this two sigma sub sigma fields. Finally, due to that fact, this expression actually boiled down to this because of uh, y has independent increment, right? And uh, and also notice that cos i j is f f x measurable, f x j measurable random variable. All right. So now we have actually completed the proof for the case where our uh, random predictable process actually being a simple uh, predictable process, right? So let's see uh, for the how do we proceed for the non-negative predictable process cosi that we get this desired result. So for a non-negative predictable process as I, we construct, right, we construct an increasing sequence of simple processes converging point wisely to to Kasai, right? And using Morton convergence theorem, convergence theorem, we can establish the, the establish the argument immediately, right? For the non-negative predictable process, establish the argument. So for the any general simple function Kasai, what uh, about how to actually uh, establish the result for any general uh, predictable function Kasai. So in that case, you can express Kasai as a difference of uh, non-negative predictable processes, right? Because I, you can represent as positive part and negative part. So we already have the uh, result for the non-negative case, then we can immediately get the result for the any general predictable process Kasai. okay? So that is the uh, proof of uh, first result of this lemma. Now we can actually start to discuss the second result, right? Second result. Right. Proof of the second result. So 
So in order to prove second result, right, we again assume that psi bar, right, psi bar is a simple process. We assume that psi bar is a simple process, right. So, we consider the uh, first of all, we consider psi bar as a simple process and then we establish the second result. So, the, therefore, you can express this psi bar as a finite sum of uh, random variables, they run from 1 to n psi bar j. As we defined in the previous case, everything is similar, right? So, with the psi bar j is fx j measurable. for j run from 1 to 2 up to n. Same argument as we did in uh, first case, right, first case, same argument. So, by following uh, Right, by following the same steps, the same steps in the first result, right, first result. So, we can get, let me express. conditional expectation of integral 0 to t of psi bar s d y s, right. Here we have stochastic integral, okay, with respect to the uh, Wiener process y under new probability measure p tilde given g p is actually reduced to this, j runs from 1 to n, conditional expectation of psi bar j times, let me write this expression over here. Right, that is one, one to n conditional expectation of j times uh, y sub by j by sub xj, right given gp. So, um, this is equal to sum j runs from 1 to n, right, conditional expectation of 
the psi bar j given g t right times y y j minus y x j okay all right so again by you know expressing this g t as a combination of the uh, sigma sub sigma field uh, generated up to x j and the sub sigma field generated from x j to t and following the similar argument as in previous result we can express this one as this is j runs from 1 to n conditional expectation of the psi bar j given g x j right times y y j minus y x j So this is nothing but integral 0 to t conditional expectation of the psi bar s even g s d y s. Okay. So we have actually established the second result, right? For the case where um, our simple, so our predictable process Kasai bar is a simple, uh, simple process, right? Right? And maybe uh, you might uh, be notice that how I pull this difference outside of this conditional expectation because this difference actually measurable with respect to sigma field gt right because gt contains the gt contains the information associated with the observation right why? All right. Now, so we have established the result for the simple process case. Now let's uh, argue the result for the general uh, process Kasai bar. So for uh, general general uh, predictable process Kasai bar, we can construct a sequence okay, of simple functions of the simple processes predictable processes, right, the sidebar k converges to, to a, a general uh, process, the sidebar, such that Psi bar k s. So absolute value of psi bar k uh, s actually so equal to psi bar s almost surely, right? O all s less or equal to t. So we construct a sequence of 
predictable simple processes, Kasai K, which is actually converges to a general uh, predictable process, Kasai Ba, and satisfying this. So our, I mean, our idea is to apply dominated convergence theorem, right? So to get the desired result. So on the other hand, And uh, expectation of uh, with respect to new probability measure P tilde psi bar K S D Y S square. So this is less so equal to expectation with respect to in probability measure of integral psi bar k s square d s by applying Jensen's inequality. And this is nothing but due to this construction, this is bounded by expectation of t so this is finite almost. This is finite. Therefore, right? Therefore, so we have a sequence of uniformly integrable uh, stochastic processes that is t integral the psi bar k s by s is uniformly integrable. Four k comes from right. Now we can immediately apply the Lebesgue dominated convergence theorem. Okay, apply Lebesgue dominated convergence theorem. So we get conditional expectation of T of the general uh, stochastic integral of the general uh, predictable process Kasai bar is integrated with respect to the uh, Wiener noise Ys given GT is nothing but limit K runs to uh, K approaches to infinity. Okay. Due to the Lebesgue dominated convergence theorem, right? We simply apply that. So, since we already proved that this conditional expectation, right, is nothing but because this is this is a simple process, right? Kasai K. So we already established the result for the simple process, right? So this is Kasai Ba. Okay. Kasai Ba K. So therefore, this is nothing but uh, integral zero to T, conditional expectation of Kasai Ba K is GS divides, right? Because we prove that. Then again, by apply, uh, uh, repeating the uh, application of the Lebesgue denominated convergence theorem, so we get so this is zero t expect 
representation of psi bar is rights. Right? So this is the proof of second result. So third result actually we have to discuss also in detail. So we can actually continue it tomorrow. So now let's uh, wrap up the second lecture. Thank you very much. <laughs>